Okay, so continuing from my previous video, I'm still using this Bluetooth keyboard with the Pi Zero 2W, and I've just got power in there and HDMI and obviously an SD card. Let's switch into screen capture. Okay, so let's open up a terminal, Control Alt and T, and type P A double S W D for password. So current password, it was Raspberry, and put my new password in and repeat it. Okay, so now I'm not going to get that warning, and just to check. I'm going to reboot and see if I get that warning. Okay, so let's just move a few things around. So if we right click and do panel appearance, I always like the panel to be on the bottom and have large icons. So bottom and very large icons. It seems that you still can't change the color. Um, so you can change the color of the bar, but uh, you can't change the opacity of it. And I like it to show the background behind it, but. Um, I guess that will come in a future update. And let's right click on this bar and we'll add a few things. Let's click on add temperature monitor and add and CPU frequency front end so we can see what we're clocked at. Now let's do a couple of things to speed this up. So if I click down here, go to preferences and screen configuration, click configure, screens, HDMI one and resolution and let's drop it down to 720. Uh, it makes a big difference to performance. And click OK to hold those settings. Let's also overclock a little bit. So sudo nano forward slash boot forward slash config dot text. And I'm not going to use a fan on this one because I understand that lots of people won't have a fan. Uh, I do overclock higher than this normally, but I'm going to go with 1200. And if we get rid of the hash, it enables the line. But we need to supply a little bit more power. So over underscore voltage equals four will supply enough power for that overclock. So I control X and yes, and enter to save that. And let's reboot. Let's see how many updates there are. Oh, there's only one. Now last time I tried Chromium, the default web browser, it was terrible. Um, I'm going to try it again. I haven't enabled ZRAM, I haven't done anything extra uh, apart from the overclock, so let's give it a try. I couldn't get it to work at all in the early stages of the Pi Zero 2W and Bullseye. Well, it looks like it's launching. Yeah, so let's do the first thing, which is uh, let's install Pi Apps. But to be fair, the browser is working. So you can see here, GitHub BotSpot Pi Apps. Uh, this is basically a very easy installer for some very, very good apps uh, on the Pi. And all we need to do is scroll down. Lee PSP's mentioned that. Uh, so it's this one here, wget. So, oh, and you can actually just, just click on this. So that's copied it. Control, Alt, and T will open the terminal. Yeah, to be fair, Chromium is working much better already. Chromium was terrible before. Paste and enter. Okay, that's all done. We can shut down the terminal and close down the web browser. And let's just see that it's there. So where is it under uh, accessories, Pi Apps? Now, what if we want Pi Apps to be on the taskbar and a few other things on the taskbar? Let's right click on one of these icons. Application launch bar settings. And you can see here, uh, we've got uh, various different things we can add. So if I go into accessories, click on Pi Apps and add, you can see it's added it to the bottom there. Uh, is there anything else I would like to add at this point? Yeah, text editor I often use. And that'll do for now. But if there's any like preferences or something that you often use, so say for instance, add remove software, that might be a good one to add on there. And then close that down. So now let's get ZRAM to improve the performance of the Pi. It uses better RAM usage, although it is seeming to be better on Bullseye so far. So let's do a search for ZRAM and Pi. Yeah, it is a slow browser still, but it's definitely working a lot better. Uh, and so the Hayden James one here, click on that and scroll down. And all you need to do really is this. Uh, so we'll do this first bit here, git clone, copy, and again, control alt T to open a terminal, pop that in and hit return. And then copy the next bit and paste that in. And as you can see, ZRAM swap service installed successfully. I'm going to reboot. I'm not sure if you do need to reboot, but let's do it anyway. Now, unlike my previous video where I had sound through the TV, this monitor doesn't have sound. So if I turn on my Bluetooth speaker, 
press and hold the Bluetooth button. Ready to pair. That's now ready to pair. I can then search for that on the Bluetooth bar, add device. This particular Bose speaker is a bit weird because it sometimes comes up with two different Bluetooth. One is to control it, one is just for sound. And uh, you need to pick the sound one. Click on Bose sound link. I know it's the speaker one because it's got an image of a speaker. The other one comes up just as a Bluetooth device. Hit pair. So now if I go down to the sound option and right click, I can pick Bose Revolve sound link. Connected to Raspberry B. So let's use PyApps to install a few things. If I go into appearance, there's a nice one in here called Lightpad. So if we do install. Okay, so that's all installed, so we can close that down. And we can close down PyApps for now. Uh, go to the start, and under, I think it's accessories. Yeah, under accessories, you can see we've got Lightpad, uh, which is basically a launcher, uh, which is something that Raspberry Pi OS, I think, lacks. So if we right click on any icon, application launch bar settings, go into accessories, find Lightpad, and add. But let's move it, because I don't like it there. I would rather it was right over here. So let's click on it and hit up, and you can see it moves to the left. Okay, so let's close that, and let's hit it to show you what it does. So you see it gives you a, quite a nice overview of all the apps that are on here. But also, if you wanted to use some sort of settings, if you click in here, so if I start typing screen, you can see screen configuration comes up. If I start putting app in, you can see various different things come up. Uh, I like the way that you can easily go to something if I press escape, rather than having to do this, start, accessories, because some things I don't think are necessarily in the most logical place. So preferences and add remove software always seems like it's in a weird place to me. Let's launch PyApps again, uh, because I want to put a faster browser on, because Chromium is still a little slow. Uh, so we go to internet, and I was advised to try Firefox as well, because um, Firefox is supposed to be good. You can see browsers has got its own section on PyApps. So let's do, well, I'm going to do Puffin first because I found Puffin works really, really well on the Pi Zero 2W. You can see my temperature's going up while it's working harder, but 60, 61 is no worries. Okay, so that's all finished, so we can close that terminal. And while we're here, let's do the Firefox rapid release. Let's install that as a browser as well. And if we hover down here, you'll be able to see that because it's working harder, it's working at 1200. Uh, actually, it dropped down to 800 then, so it wasn't working that hard. There you go, back to 1200. Okay, so Firefox is installed now as well. So if we go down the bottom, under internet, you can see we've got three web browsers now. Let's close down PyApps, and let's just arrange those as we know how to do that. Internet, so it wasn't showing up then for a second. Right, let's add Puffin, uh, and let's add Firefox as well. But let's put Puffin further up, because I'm pretty sure that's the one I'm gonna use. And I'm actually going to get rid of Chromium for now. And let's put Firefox up next to it as well. And close that down. Looking nice down here. And it's later on in the day and there are more updates available. So let's show the updates. Yeah, things keep getting improved. Okay, that's all up to date now. So let's just show you what I found uh, with the Puffin browser. So if I launch this for the first time on this system, Let's just do a search, Hot UK Deals, as it's Black Friday. And click on that. You can see that as a browser, it's nice and fast. Now, it annoys me a little bit that it comes up at 150% all the time. Uh, so if you go into Preferences, I think this saves. Uh, so it's under Content Settings. You can see it says Page Zoom. So I'm going to change that, and I'm going to drop that down to 100%. Because especially on a 720, that's fine. And on startup, continue where you left off, it's fine. Search engine, I'm going to go with Google. And hopefully that saves as is. But I think you can see that the browser itself is pretty swift and, and works really well. Now, I did notice that on YouTube, and let's see if it's still the same on this one, uh, the tearing was really bad. So if I do a search for Lee PSP Video HDR, uh, I found that it plays all right at 480 resolution. Okay, my Bluetooth speaker's working absolutely fine, so it would let me go to 4K then. So what you tend to find is with movement, it was tearing really badly. Yeah, 
well it's really skipping and, and not very good. I don't know if this is because it's the first time it's been run. Let's go full screen. Yeah, so really bad. And you could see a bit of the line of tearing. You kind of need something to, yeah, like that. You can you get like a vertical line. Um, it happens when the camera moves fast. And for some reason, it's still not playing. Uh, I would say that's still not playing at 480. It might be because I'm really close to the monitor. But anyway, the tearing is bad. I found a way uh, of fixing that tearing. And in fact, it's actually uh, a video I did ages ago. Must have been this one. Here we go, this one here, sudo remove, auto start. So let's pop that in a terminal. And it deals with a component that manages the desktop and uh, it seems to make a difference even now. So let's hit return on that. That's done. And then reboot. So I feel it's made a little bit of a difference but I'm still getting some tearing. I'm gonna switch over to uh, the previous version of Raspberry Pi. OS, which is Buster. This is Bullseye, the latest version, because I think I had better results on Buster. Okay, so this is Raspberry Pi OS, but this is Debian 10, which is the version called Buster, not Bullseye, which is what I started the video with, uh, just to show you how Puffin performs in this, because I believe it definitely performs better. Uh, let's just close some of these windows. Let's just do a search first for Hot UK Deals, just to show that I think the web browser just feels snappier and this is the same overclock and all the same settings I've used on this but it's just using the previous version of the OS. So as you can see it looks pretty snappy. Uh, let's do that same YouTube search and click on that. And if you want to know how to uh, install Buster instead of Bullseye, so go for the older version, it's in this version of Pi News. Uh, I put it in there, there's a little tutorial at the end that shows you how to do it. Click on that. And it starts playing quicker anyway. But it definitely looks a lot smoother on this, looks crisper. Um, and uh, when you see this bit, which suffers from the tearing really bad on Bullseye, on Buster with this fix, with the tearing fix, it works really well. So uh, yeah, interesting. I, I would definitely say at the moment you're still better off with Buster. Uh, even though Bullseye keeps getting regular updates, I've had two different ones today, uh, it's still Buster is the one for performance on the Raspberry Pi Zero 2W. Anyway, I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.